Hi everyone, my name is Laureline and I'm going to present you a joint work with Denis Kuperberg and, Denis and Damien Pousse about cyclic proofs and jumping automata. Uh, let's begin this talk by looking a bit at what is a proof. So usually what we do when we do a proof, we have a bunch of hypotheses or actions. We apply some deduction rules uh, finitely many times and so we end up with a conclusion and we call this a proof. Formally, the key ingredient to have a proof is we need to have some language that describes our formulas, some inference or deduction rules, a way to assemble them in order to have a full proof at the end, and we want about our proof system to have some property of soundness and completeness in order to link it with semantic. Uh, for instance, if we take the example of the natural deduction for proposition uh, logic, the language will just be uh, the proposition set of propositional formula. Uh, we have some inference rule which correspond to the introduction and the elimination and the, of the different connectors, and we can assemble them as a proof tree, which looks like this. And we know that there exists a proof of a given sequence, H1, Hn, dash, F, if and only if, F holds under the hypothesis H1 to Hn. Um, in this work, we focused on some uh, cyclic proof system. So the main difference with um, usual proof is that we allow the proof tree to be infinite, but uh, as we want it to be represented as a finite structure, uh, we require that there is only finitely many distinct subtrees, and so we can represent them as a proof graph rather than proof trees, uh, and the name of cyclic proofs, because it looks like a proof tree with some cycle in it. Um, we depart from a work from Damien Pousse and Anupam Das about um, a cyclic proof system which uh, describes the inclusion of regular expression and the, the languages that describe our formulas are is the regular expressions. And we have some proof graphs. Of course, the fact that we allow for infinite branches and to reuse uh, some part of the proof tree makes that not every proof is valid. And so we need to have a validity criterion on the infinite branches uh, to say that a proof is valid. And this criterion is syntactic, so it's easy to check. And we end up with a proof system that is sound and complete for uh, the inclusion of regular expression. And what we were interested in in this work is about the computational interpre interpretation of such a proof system. We want to see a proof of a sequence E-F as a program that takes an input in E and outputs something in F. Uh, the fact that we can have several proofs of the same state statement, the same sequence, uh, is a ref reflects the fact that we can have several programs that have the same types. And for example, if we want to prove the sequence A dash A plus A, we have two choices. Either we can uh, take the leftmost part or the rightmost A, and it exactly corresponds to the two programs, the right injection and the left injection. Um, this is a field that has been um, a bit, uh, a lot investigated in the domain of finite proof, with, for instance, the Curie Award is isomorphism and type programming. And this is really an ongoing work for cyclic proofs. Uh, in this work, we introduce a Boolean type which corresponds to the some one plus one, and we add to the original syst proof system some structural rules that correspond to like simple natural programs. 
and we want to study the expressive power of such uh, proofs. Um, in the first time, and what I present here, uh, we focused on proof for uh, languages, meaning that we uh, reduce the um, shape of our sequence to be of the shape A star dash two, where A is an alphabet, which means uh, only looking for function from A star to two, which is exactly the languages. And the goal is to characterize what kind of language we can obtain with such proofs. The proof system is rather restrained due to these uh, constraints. The only expressions we have are either a letter or a word, a star, and the sequence are list of such expression. And we have two axioms, one to co which correspond to true, one to false for um, the right part. We have two, um, two structural rules, one which is the weakening and one which is the contraction. And we have one rule for each uh, kind of expression. We have the disjunction. Yes. Ah, I don't hear so. Yes. Yes, it looks the same. It's because um, if you see at how we define the Boolean type two, it's one plus one. So it's uh, the the right rule for the plus when we can choose to go for left or right. But after we only have one at the right, so it looks exactly the same, but it corresponds internally to a choice for this Boolean type. Okay, and so we have a rule for the letters, which is a disjunction of k's, which say which letter it is on the alphabet. And so it has as many premises as a number of letters in the alphabet, and we have one um, rule for the star, which corresponds to unrolling the fixed point that the star represents. So either uh, the word is empty, and it corresponds to the left premise, or it is not, and then we get a letter and the remainder of the word, A star to the right premise. So let's look at an example and how such a proof can represent a language. For instance, here we have a proof that recognizes the language B star. So we start from a sequence A star dash two. We apply a star rule. Either the word is empty and then it is in B star and we can apply the true axiom or it is not, and we get a letter, we can apply the letter rule. Either we have an A, and then it is not accepted, so we will uh, apply the false action, or it is a B, and then we can go back to the first step with the remainder of the world. You can see that it looks like uh, how an automaton will function to recognize uh, the B star, and in fact, we have the following result, that is, without the contraction rule, uh, the proof system is exactly recognizing the regular languages, and we have an effective translation from a proof to a DFA and from a DFA to a proof. Um, but when we add the contraction rules to the system, we add a lot of expressivity to it. And for example, we can do the language ANBN, which is well known to not, not to be regular. Uh, how we do this? First, we use the contraction rules to create a copy of the input word. And on the first word, we will uh, read the A, and on the second one, we will read the Bs. So um, we just read the second copy until the first B, and then we begin to read both copy synchronously. Each time we read uh, A in the first one, we want to read a B in the second one until the end. 
And with the same kind of thing, but only by making a third copy at the beginning, we can even do A N B N C N, which is not even context free. So we can see that we have kind of a lot of expressivity with this proof system. And we introduced a new model of automaton to um, express in an automaton why, what kind of languages were recognized. Um, the construction led us to the way of multi-head automata because we can create copy of the input word and read the same input word at the same time at different position. The main difficulty was that the construction rule can be located inside a loop in the proof. And so we cannot say uh, before having the input how many head we will need. So we decided to mimic the behavior of the proof by allowing heads to be recycled, by allowing them to jump on the position of another head, and we call this model jumping multi-head automaton. Uh, so it has a set of states, an alphabet, and a transition where we read a k plate of letters, and then each head can either stay in place, place move uh, one step, or jump to the position of another head. And we add also an equivalent of the, crit of the validity criterion we have on proof to this model. Uh, let's see an example of jumping multi-head automaton. Uh, we can, for example, recognize uh, the unary language where words are, have length which is a power of two. Uh, for this, the idea is that we will have two heads, one which will advance slowly and one with, which will advance quickly. And uh, each time one read one letter, the other one read two letters. So, for example, here the green read one A and the blue read two A's, and so on, until either it is not possible, and then we know that the length is odd, and we can reject the, the word, or we can reach the end of the word, and we know that the length is even, and the green let, uh, head is exactly at the position of the middle of the world. So we can do exactly the same thing with the second half of the world and look if it is also even, etc. Until we have only one letter left and then we, do, we know it's uh, a power, the length is a power of two and then the world is accepted. And the main result we have is this equivalence theorem that says that uh, the proof system um, recognizes exactly the same class of languages as this class of automata. Uh, there is an effective trans translation between uh, both models. Uh, the idea is that a state of the automaton corresponds to a position in the tree. Um, the accepting or rejecting states correspond to the true or false axioms. The fact that we have multiple heads corresponds to the fact that we can do contraction and duplicate the in, uh, input uh, in the proof. And when we read a letter and do a transition in the automaton, it corresponds to applying a star rule and then doing the disjunction of case about which letter it is. Um, but how can we place um, this class of language in the non-literature? So we can compare our model of automaton with the model that is in the literature. Usually multi automata are either heads that can only go from left to right or heads that can go either to le from left to right or from right to left which are called respectively one-way multi-head automata and two-way multi-head automata. Uh, our model is located <coughs> between those two. What consequence we can derive is that the emptiness is undecidable and that the, the languages 
we are recognizing is inside lock space because it is well known that the, that the two ways multi-head automata recognize exactly the lock, lock space. And we thought and we conjectured in the paper that uh, our model was strictly less expressive than two-way multi-head automata, but in fact it is equal and we have a proof that is written but not published yet. The difficulty is to uh, simulate a left move of one of the head with jumping. And I will show you a bit how we can do this by doing the example of the palindromes language, language which is kind of representative of, of what we can do with two ways automata. Uh, we need three heads and it, the, each time we need to uh, look we have the blue head that will pass, uh, go through the world and with the red and green head we will find the symmetric letter of the blue one so we can compare them. So at the beginning we just take them and move until we get to the end of the world and we can compare both letters. And we could find the last letter because we had a shift of one between the green and the red head. And if we advance the blue one, we will need to find the end, the, the letter before where is the green one. So we need a shift of two between the red and the green one. And we can do exactly this by making the green one jumping to the beginning and the red one jumping to the blue one that has advanced one step. So we can just go to the end with the red one. We know that we can compare matching uh, symmetric position with the blue and the green one, etc. by with this shift. And we can generalize this ID by adding uh, and transform a two-way multi-head automata to a jumping multi-head automata by adding from, for each head its symmetric head and uh, simulating the uh, left move this way. And we obtain as a corollary that our uh, cyclic proofs with the contraction rules uh, characterize log space. Okay, so a bit of perspective and future work about this stuff. Uh, first of all, you, uh, there is a very common rule that we don't have in our system it's a cut rule because it doesn't uh, fit with this restricted form uh, shape of sequence. But it will be very natural in a more uh, extend, uh, extended sh shape do, to have it because it corresponds naturally to the composition of function in kinds of um, computational interpretation. And we can look at uh, this time a restricted Alpha, restricted alphabet rather than a restricted shape of sequence by uh, having only the one letter alphabet. We can have some sequence of the form um, k plate of stars dash a star and it will correspond to function of uh, n to the power of k to n by seeing the number uh, in unary. And what we are doing and what we conjecture is that uh, the more general um, system where we don't restrict the, the shape of the sequence uh, corresponds without the contraction to primitive recursive function and with the contraction to, to system T. Okay, thank you for your attention and if you have any question. I don't know, Matt, but there is this, uh, I mean, there are better behaved classes where you have a hierarchy of petals. You're not allowed to manipulate the petals uh, as you want, but you do it according to the hierarchy. What happens here if you introduce some restriction about uh, the hierarchy of the heads and you're not allowed to manipulate them arbitrarily? So have you looked at restrictions? I'm not sure. I didn't hear everything. 
I was thinking that for Pebble Automata there is some restriction on Pebbles that allows you to get uh, this ability by imposing a hierarchy on the Pebbles and then you restrict the way you manipulate Pebbles, uh, must respect the hierarchy. And I was asking whether you looked at uh, similar restrictions for, for this jumping automata. We didn't have very kind of relevant to the first question. Maybe you said it, but do you get different classes of languages for different numbers of texts? Yes, but I'm I'm not sure we can really characterize it like uh, we would put for graphics such as spectrum, union, computation, this kind of thing. Um, one thing I didn't say is that um, with on the two heads, there is some more language that um, requires when well, there is some language that with one way multi head automaton uh, requires k head for some case and this one we can do it with two head only in two way so there is some language we can well there is some kind of yeah we did not look closely at the PRP and what kind of thing we can have Maybe I'll hold my retail and psychic groups is somehow suggest some productive flavor. Yeah. Uh, so on the other hand, as far as I understood, they describe you take it. Definitely a condition, and they describe special processes which is then are back with your system. So um, this is in fact, in the field of psychic groups, there has been some cases where it has been shown that it, uh, that it has the same power as the inductive principle. Uh, <coughs> uh, and some cases where it has been shown that it is strictly more expressive. So it really depends on which distance of psychic group we are looking at. And for, the, for this one, we think that it is equivalent to an indicative psychic. Thank you very much.